Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> And I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. This one is going to be from the battle 2020. It is a Jack and Jill competition. If you guys don't know what that is, it basically means you're going to have a leader and a follower. They're going to come together and improvise. They are going to demonstrate my favorite aspect of Lindy Hop. So let's get right into it. Here we go. All right. I'm pulling no punches. Let's see. Who is going to be in this competition? Uh, how many competitors? Because that is going to determine how I'm going to actually be judging this. So this is the pro level, so I'm assuming the level <clears throat> of the dancers is extremely high. And it is. I know some of these dancers. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, right now it just looks busy. Uh, and it's hard for me to pinpoint what I like so far. So far, uh, everybody can dance. It's clear. It's a good warm up, but no one's really drawn me in yet. Not yet. Let's see what they can do under pressure a little bit. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so it looks like this is, again, going to be the battle format. Two on two. Jack and Jill see what they can do in the heat of the moment. This is always my favorite because this is like sports, folks. It's real. It's the only thing real on television is sports. <clears throat> Oh, great song, good tempo too. Okay, so everything right now is very conspicuous on this couple. They're doing a good job, particularly the follower. Um, <clears throat> Leader's doing fine too. Everything is, again, predictable. I can tell you what's gonna happen before it happens. I don't like that. So I don't feel like there's any surprise with that first couple. Okay. So far, I like the unpredictability of this couple. Both of these couples are dancing um, like social dancers. They're not paying attention to the real timing of the music as much. Okay. <clears throat> so far, the first couple had better control um, where it looked like it was more polished, but I think uh, the second couple was my favorite because of the diversity of the movement and the, ex the unexpectedness of what they're doing. Okay, so this is an example of play, being more playful and more direct in contrast with the music. 
as opposed to just doing the contrast of the of just the technique. I'm going with the couple on the left, even though I think they're going to pick the couple on the right. I didn't like the couple on the right as much, and I think that goes to the leader's choices of leading and setting up the movements. Tonally, it looked the same. There was no real contrast. So I went with the couple on the left. Uh, for me, there's a little bit more entertainment. The timing of the music was emphasized more. So I could hear... Uh, I like that. Hey, Taizia in that red dress. I see you. I see you. Another great dancer and bass player. So if you haven't checked her out, you need to check out uh, Octopussy. Here we go. <clears throat> Celia and Danilo. Okay. I like the elasticity in their body. It's not as loose where I can see everything coming. It's a little tighter, so it means there's going to be a few more surprises if uh, the leader changes something. I won't see it coming as much. All right. <clears throat> Angelique and Ero. Okay, so, so far, uh, this couple is emphasizing the contrast in the music the most. <clears throat> but both couples are equal in the control part. So I'm going to give that first round to the second couple. Good job. Okay, so here's, here's what I think. I think the second couple is gonna win. I prefer uh, Danilo and Celia, but I think the other couple should win mainly because the choices of the, what the leader decided to do, because I could see the follower move a little bit more freely, uh, and I could see them as a couple more than I could uh, Celia and Danilo. So I'm gonna give it to uh, Errol. I would have given it to the other couple uh, and not Danilo and Celia, but just a hair. It's not it's just a few things, but uh, I think Danilo and Celia had a little bit more confidence. So there you have it. Anything can happen, guys. Anything can happen. All right, let's see. Okay, <laughs> going right into it. So they can rest a little bit. I'm gonna announce that the winner of this competition will win a full pass. Listen up for Canadian Swing Championship. All right, CSC. I heard that's a really good event. Don't know, never been there. For me, it's all about the dancers right, at the event. The that's what events are about, right? You starting. All right. This is going to be interesting. <clears throat> okay. Very good. So far, very musical. I hear the music.
Very good balance, not emphasizing everything. Timing is great. <clears throat> Excellent. Throwing in moves in there. Come on. I like that head nod, that head nod. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, so far, <clears throat> I got to give it to the other couple. They had all three elements that I looked for. I like that Jamin Jackson move, though. I saw that. I like that. This is what I mean. This is great dancing. <clears throat> the cartwheels. <laughs> Zanello, that was great. <laughs> All right. That, that was good. That was good. But I'm telling you right now. Uh, green on the green side. Red on the right side. Anna and uh, Gontran. Last judgment. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They were my winners. One, two, three. They were my winners. Uh, and as you can see, many of the other judges agree with me. Uh, so let's talk about this one. So, as you guys know, I am extremely picky when it comes to uh, Jack and Jill formats because for me, this is really the essence of jazz. You have call and response either happening in music or you're having it with the dancers. And I love to see when people get the essence of that and they can do it well. Now, I will tell you there are subjective elements to this that make up 70 to 80% of how one would actually judge a competition like this which leaves only a little bit of room to those critical ideas that must be looked at universally um, in order for everybody to be able to dance with each other. And so for me, when I look at a competition like this, I obviously first go to the control aspect of Lindy Hop. That is that call and response that has to be there. I can't see two people calling at the same time. I can't see the follower just call responding which is calling without a call i can't just see the leader just doing whatever and the follower is responding and the leader doesn't give the follower enough chance to respond and there's just a lot of miscommunication so it did not appear at all that these dancers had any of those kind of problems on a technical level they could all swing out they could all do charleston so quickly i must go into the subjective realm of how I would judge these types of competitions. And I tell you all, all the time, the majority of it is subjective. So don't get your feelings hurt if you're in a competition like this and you make it past one round, it means you can swing out. It means you can do Charleston. It means you can already dance. And there are some other subjective elements that would make your dancing a little bit more appealing to the audience and to judges. Because I think there's a distinct balance. So for me, timing is critically important because the dancers aren't just simply dancing by themselves. They're not also just dancing on top of a swing metronome. There are changes within the music that help us identify how wonderful the song can be. We call it a melody, right? And so when a dancer can fit their movements, whenever those transitions are taking place, it allows the audience to be able to feel an emotion and give a reaction based on what they're seeing unfold, right? So for me, as a, as a judge, the, the critical part of Lindy Hop has to be judged immediately, which is the control part. 
So then I have to take my judge hat off and pretend as if I'm someone in the audience who's seeing this to get an emotional reaction. Because clearly the musicians are playing to benefit the dancers. And clearly the dancers are dancing to benefit those who are watching them. But I think there's an extra layer. There's, a, there's an additional layer that needs to take place in the dancer's mind to help elevate what they are actually doing so audience members can appreciate it even more so. And that is that ability to be able to balance what they're doing visually to the music in a way that it gets an emotional reaction from those who are watching. And that's a very subjective thing. But there are some elements of it that make logical sense that appeal to the emotions of humans. They're just, they're just art. The music is modulating, it's building up, it gets to a climax, it goes back down and it continues to do this. So the dancers that actually won, won for me. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tell you right now, the number one reason I thought uh, Anna and Gontran destroyed that competition was because of their ability to accentuate the timing of the music so that I can visually see the melody. If literally, if all I could hear was the first eight count of that song, and you turn the music off and you showed them dance, I would know the song. I could see it unfold every time they would do something. They didn't do it every single time, but they knew when the melody would, would be pronounced in a way where if they danced, they wanted to add value to what we were hearing so that it could look like it's one thing happening, right? So they destroyed that. They not only had the timing, but the choice of movements that were being led, not all of them were easy. I will tell you that for now. I mean, Gontran and Anna were leading and following stuff that a lot of times are not easy to do on the social dance floor. And he was bold enough to suggest it, and she was trusting enough to just go with it. And that's the beauty of social dance, that sometimes may not work even when you work with your partner there's still an element of fear there and distrust. So when you get in those moments of competing, you kind of fall apart. But they did not do that. I think his confidence, just going out there and making things happen, and her trust to go with that is what really sold it for me, along with the timing and control. Now, I will tell you, there are some ambiguous aspects of swing dancing when it comes to what people would call good control or good technique. And really that's opinion. Because for me, as long as a leader can move a follower and there's no pain and the intentionality is being met, it's successful. It doesn't matter if it just looks super smooth and predictable. For me, that's a style of manipulating that technique, which is call and response. That's a way of just saying, I want all of my movements to look so predictable and smooth and polished that it looks soft and stretchy. And some people don't dance that way. Some are just like, hey, I want all of my movements to look like a surprise. So you can't see what's gonna happen next. So there's less elasticity in their body. And you can clearly see that, the implications of bending their knees less. You can see it in the dancing and go, ooh, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Oh, wow, what a surprise. And the dancers who tend to use that technique or that aspect of the technique tend to have an advantage when you are trying to demonstrate visual musicality. When you can see everything coming all the time, it's almost predictable and it doesn't make your heart jump when it's super smooth and polished. That's, that's just my assessment of it when I see it. I just see really good dancing. It looks better for... It looks better for the dancers that are experiencing it, but visually speaking, it just looks... It looks plain. There's no surprises to it. And so if you can take what you're doing and add the element of surprise and match it with the timing and have the creativity with that, you're top two, folks. Now, I will tell you if Danilo and his partner, I believe it was Celia, if they had a few, a little bit more confidence <clears throat> and there was a little bit more, uh, just a few more moves that they did that didn't require them to just kind of hold hands and improvise, but actually were a little bit more call response. And it was a few bits of choreography that were there that I wouldn't say choreography, but creativity, just some different moves that were there. I saw some stuff, but I didn't see enough moving of call and response to make me merit and say, yeah, they definitely are competing with the winners. Because that first set of Gontrana's partner, that was, 
That was beast mode. He just came straight out. I was like, all right, we're going first. Bam. I was like, yes. That's what I'm talking about. It was just like, no mercy. Right? No mercy. And so I like that. I like the battle format of what they're doing because it, it reminds me of my life when I was in hip hop and this attitude of show me something I haven't seen before. Don't jack my moves. You know, that was just kind of the attitude. And, and, and I, I somewhat like that, but I somewhat don't like it because it produces kind of an unnecessary rebellion where you don't actually learn from the people who've come before you in a way that helps empower you. It's more like, don't like him, bro. But that was a dope move. I'll never tell him. I'll just jack it. <laughs> right? Like, come on. We, we, we kind of do that in swing. Uh, people pay homage to different people. But I think it's still kind of like trying to just like give the teacher an apple. Say, hey, look, I've done your move. Like me. And, and that's a little odd too. I like the aggressiveness of this particular format. Simply because it just brings that rawness back. That spirit of creativity and, and healthy competition so that dancers can actually focus on the dance more. They can see where they can get better. And there's pressure to actually birth good ideas. It's not out of comfort. And I like that. So I hope this, I hope this uh, type of format continues. Uh, big shout out to all the dancers who competed in this because there's a lot of pressure when everybody's watching you to nail uh, whatever you're doing. So it's not easy. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not easy. So if you're, if you're wanting to do this, do it. You should put yourself out there and have the pressure of being able to not mess up in front of a group of people. I think that healthy dose of fear will make it easier for you to grasp a hold of your own sense of identity. Like, what am I good at in this dance? What am I not good at at this dance? And once you get the technique out of the way, all the technical parts that we somewhat overrate, then it's going to be much easier for you to find yourself as a dancer and get out there and, and show people that you are distinct. You're not just this homogenous computer um, printing out the same stuff everybody else is doing. And I think that's the beauty of the simplicity of this technique. If you're, if you're missing out on that, I would encourage you to check out um, our approach. We, I spent 10,000 plus hours trying to figure out a way to make the technique simple. Because when I came into the scene, it wasn't easy for me. I just came in and wanted to learn everything. But in doing that, there was confusion because everyone had a different word to mean the same thing and they had a different approach. People were mixing style with things that are absolutely fundamental. And where does that leave a new mind who's genuinely serious about mastering something for the right reasons? Not just to get into it and, and, and you know, championing swing dancing for social justice. You know, I didn't do any of that. I came in humbly going, I'm burned out on hip hop. I'm burned out on all my other dance styles. This looks legit and I want to conquer it. How do I do it? So no one had a straightforward way to do that. I had to figure it out after 10,000 hours. So I encourage you, if you want a shortcut, you want to be able to see how simple it is to get the technical parts out of the way to put you in the top three of every competition, then I encourage you, you want to check out that membership below. It's really awesome. It'll save you a lot of time and you'll be able to start fixing yourself as you social dance, not always having to have a teacher on your back or take private lessons to figure out if what you're doing is good or not, right? So that's that's what I would encourage you to do if you're struggling. If you guys want to get a taste of our school, just check out some of our free courses. We post new stuff every single week. I'm in the creativity zone, trying to make up new stuff all the time to push myself as an artist, but also to inspire our students to think, Get in the game. We want to see your unique fingerprint and Lindy Hop to help inspire dancers of the future. That's what it's all about for me. And I hope if you like the creativity uh, that you see from many of these dancers, then you're going to really appreciate uh, some of the content that we're sharing every Monday and Tuesday. So check that out too. So let me guys know what you thought about this comments in uh, about this competition in the comments section. I love some of these dancers. Uh, I know many of them personally, but I try to judge them for what they're actually doing in the moment and not necessarily for what I know them, you know, from the past and what they can do uh, because we're all different. We're different. We change every day. And so 
I loved watching that. That was super entertaining. Gontran and uh, his partner Anna, you guys crushed it. Much respect to you guys. Please keep doing that. It keeps me going. It's really inspiring to be able to see people get out there and represent Lindy Hop in the truest way. I really appreciate it. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next reaction video or one of my classes online. Take care.